Hi, I'm Jason Wishart, Biosecurity Manager with the Established Invasive Animals Team at Agriculture Victoria. In this video, we're going to look at monitoring and why it should be included in your integrated pest management program. Monitoring is often overlooked in pest management programs because it's often seen as a waste of time and money. But this couldn't be further from the truth. Monitoring helps to measure pest damage and abundance, identify hotspots or high use areas in the landscape, confirm if non-target species are present, select the right control tools, ensure your program is having the intended impact and it allows you to make changes to improve your program. Two types of monitoring are used to monitor pest management programs, including performance monitoring and operations monitoring. Performance monitoring looks at the impact of your pest management program on the pest animals and their damage, while operations monitoring focuses on the efficiency of your program to ensure that the costs don't outweigh the benefits. Monitoring can be time consuming, so it's important to be clear about what you want to monitor, when it should be monitored, and how often, to confirm you are meeting the project objectives. A range of performance monitoring techniques can be used to monitor pest animals and their damage. They include camera trapping, spot lighting and thermal imagery, activity plots, and you may also record lambing rates or crop yields, or look at the response of threatened species populations to your program. No matter what technique you choose, it must be undertaken consistently in terms of site location, duration, equipment and personnel, so the results are comparable. Now I'm going to briefly discuss each of the more common monitoring techniques used to measure performance. In this part of the video, I'm going to run through some of the basics for using activity plots to monitor pest animal populations. Um, so I've got one set out here. Essentially what you need to do is make sure that your plot covers the entire road so that the fox or wild dog can't step around your plot. They've got to actually walk, walk through it. The other thing you need to do is make sure that the plot itself is wide enough so they don't just jump over. Um, so it needs to be at least a meter in, in uh, width. And then also you need to set these up at a number of different locations along the property and, and quite clearly throughout the property so that you get a good representation of fox abundance. Because if you only do one or two plots, it's not really going to give you a good indication. So yeah, making sure that they're at regular intervals and there's enough to cover your property to get good numbers. And then the other thing that's important to do as well is to run it over several nights because on one night there might be a high level of activity that's unusual for some reason or there might be low level. So if you've done it over three nights, you can get that average and use that. And then after your control program, you can measure again and compare the same with the same. So it's got to be comparable, making sure that you've done everything in the same way um, and, and using the same number of nights and those sorts of things. So when you've set your plot, so this is when you've, you're just, just setting up, you've, you've created your plot, you make sure that the sand here is all nice and soft. Um, so we've already pre-done one here, but what you can also use is a, is a bag of sand too. If the, if the roads are really hard or um, yeah, the surface that you're working on is really hard, then a, a fox print or a dog print it won't show up um, so you can add some sand to that mix or you can use your rake or a shovel and just really give it a roughing up so it's nice and soft like you can see here this is is really sort of uh, powdery now um, so yeah you set your plots up next morning come back and have a look and and record what you've found and for most pest animal control programs presence absence is really all you need so the number of plots with fox activity is sufficient um, so that's, that's really basically what you have, have there for activity plot monitoring. In this part of the video, I'm going to talk about how remote cameras can be used to monitor pest animal populations or even how they can be used to monitor control tools. Now there are a number of different cameras on the market. Um, some can take video and some can take still. It just depends on the situation and what you're hoping to achieve as to which one you might choose in those situations. Um, there are also a number of different types of camera sets that you can use. So you can use a passive set, which essentially tries to capture the animal in the landscape doing its natural thing. So they're just passively moving through the landscape and that's generally used to get a, a count on population. The other thing you can do is use an active set and that's where you'd use an actual lure to bring an animal to a particular area and count them that way. Um, and sometimes that would even be considered well, what you would use for doing baiting and, and things like that too. 
Okay, so once you've found the place that you'd like to actually place your uh, camera in the landscape, the next thing you've got to think about is probably the, the camera settings and the height um, of the camera and the distance from the, from the actual target as well. So I've got a camera here. It's one of the ones we use quite regularly. Um, if you're most, most likely you're going to be monitoring things like pigs or foxes with, with remote cameras. Uh, smaller animals are often a little bit more difficult to detect. So it's really important that you have them at the, at the right height. So it's essentially a camera detects the heat in movement. So you want to be able to put the camera at the same height as the center of mass. So with a pig, it's about sort of waist, waist height or a little bit lower than waist height. Um, and you just put it into the post at about there. And you also want to put that camera facing at about 25 degrees to the trail that you think the animal will be, will be walking down. If you face it at right angles, the animal will be passed before the um, camera triggers and takes the photo. So it's really important that you sort of angle it along that trail and, and make sure it, it sort of captures images as the animal walks up and along and, and past. So a little bit different if you're going to be monitoring your bait station or something like that. If it's a bait station, same thing about the height. Really important to have the height right but the distance from the bait station might be a bit different. So for pigs, for example, you might put your camera about, say, five metres away because you want to maximise that field of view and make sure that you get all the animals in the shot. The other thing are the settings on the camera itself. When you're monitoring in the landscape and having animals pass through quickly, you might have your camera set really uh, high sensitivity so it takes a, a photo quite quickly and you might take a number of shots during each trigger as well. But one thing that's really important is that no matter what sort of setup and, and settings that you have, they remain the same for your entire monitoring program. Because if you change the settings, you might get a different um, detection rate or whatever, and it might give you a false reading on, on population declines or increases. So make sure that that's exactly the same. So if you've set it one way before your monitoring or before your control program, make sure that they're set the same way afterwards and that you use the same locations and that you monitor for the same length of time as well. So often it's a really good idea to, not just to monitor for one night or two nights, but monitor for a length of time um, and get an average per night per camera. That way your uh, results will be a lot more accurate as well and those declines will act be actual declines and not maybe a false reading. So once you've collected your data, the next thing you need to do is, is actually analyze it. And the best way to do that in most situations, particularly for the um, passive monitoring where you, we're getting animals moving through the landscape, is to look at the number of passes per animal per camera per night and you average that out over the monitoring period. That's probably the most most effective way for, for analysing camera data. There are other ways too but but for monitoring for a pest control program that's that's probably um, probably the best one to use. The other thing you could potentially do if you're actually looking at um, visitation rate towards a, a feral pig bait station for example you might then count the number of visits rather than passes. Um, but no matter what it is, always use the same, always analyse it the same way. Consistency is really the key for monitoring so that you're actually comparing apples with apples. In this part of the video, I'm going to go through some of the basics for spotlight monitoring. And that's really to get an, an, an idea of the pest abundance or pest activity on your land before you do control and after you do control. So there are a few things that you've got to think about with spotlighting. Um, one thing is probably the target animal. So spotlighting works really well, I guess, for rabbits and foxes and to a lesser extent, feral pigs. Their eye shine's not so great. And you wanna have transects, predetermined transects as well that you'll monitor on a regular basis. So you'll use the same transect each time. So a transect really is just a path through, the, through your property. And you wanna make sure that that covers a good representation of what your property actually is. So if you've got a bit of bushland and a bit of open grassland and everything else, you wanna make sure that that trail that you're gonna spotlight covers all of that. Another thing that you need to do is make sure that the time of the night that you do your spotlighting is, is consistent. Um, the people that you use to do the spotlighting is consistent and also the actual methodology for spotlighting is consistent. So generally you travel at a certain speed throughout your, your transects and you, you do this nice steady arc and you're looking for, for eye shine. So eye shine from rabbits or eye shine from foxes. Um, to do all this though, you're gonna need some, some equipment and 
Um, it, that again will depend on the size of the property that you, you're choosing or, or wanting to spotlight or do your monitoring. So if it's a larger property, you might use an actual spotlight. Like these are quite powerful and can shine at a, at a, a certain distance or a large distance. And you can also use them out of a vehicle. Um, and we've got one here that we use regularly for our rabbit monitoring and it's got a purpose-built spotlight cage on the back for safety purposes. The other thing you might use if your property's a little bit smaller is just simply using a torch. Um, you want a fairly high powered torch. And again, so, you know, if you're using your vehicle, you're traveling along at a certain distance, same when you're on foot, you travel along at that certain distance. So it wants to be nice and steady and comparable. So after you finish spotlighting, the data that you want to analyze is the number of animals seen or the number of individuals seen per spotlight kilometer. So for rabbits, it'll be the number of rabbits that you saw over a spotlight kilometer. And you want to compare that information your, your before information to your after information and hopefully see whether there's been a percentage knockdown. Um, and that's basically it for spotlight monitoring. The type of monitoring technique used will depend on the target animal, the location and the equipment and resources available. You should also conduct monitoring over several nights during each monitoring period to allow you to calculate an average as your results will be more accurate this way. Most operations monitoring is achieved by recording the costs associated with the control program in terms of time, resources and equipment. You may also look at the number of animals removed per technique to determine its cost effectiveness. Once you've completed your monitoring, it's also important to analyse the data. For most pest control programs, data analysis does not need to be complicated. Remember, you're only trying to confirm that your management program is having the desired impact on the pest animals and their damage and that the costs aren't outweighing the benefits. So as previously mentioned, you might calculate the average number of passes per species per camera per night if using camera monitoring, the average number of individuals per spotlight kilometre if using spotlighting, or the average number of plots containing activity per collection period if using activity plots. Monitoring is essential for any pest management program as it allows you to confirm if your program is meeting the objectives and if it's not, it enables you to make changes to improve it. It also helps to avoid any non-target impacts. For further information on monitoring and control methods, please watch the other videos in this series, refer to the Agriculture Victoria website or call the Customer Service Centre. Thanks for watching.